Hi, welcome back to Frazzled Dad's Minis. I'm Jim. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about a cool experiment that I ran to learn how Army Speed Painter 2.0 paints worked. Months ago, I, when they first dropped the new uh, Speed Paint 2.0 set, um, I bought a mega set off of Amazon. I think I even pre ordered it. So I was pretty excited when it showed up. And Again, because I'm so new to painting, I didn't really know how speed paints worked. I played around a little bit with one or two contrasts from Citadel, uh, so I was struggling with them. S several of the paints behaved quite differently. I didn't really understand what the colors looked like, and so I said to myself, self, let's run a little test and experiment and see what we can figure out. So this episode is that journey. I'm going to talk about how I prepared, um, what my goals were, what I want to learn. Uh, I'll talk about the bases that I use, how I evaluated things. Um, I'll also walk through what I learned, uh, which ones I like, and I'll show a few pieces that I've painted with since doing that and some of the lessons that I got out of there. Um, and then also along the way, I'll talk a bit about, I've got a set of like eight Pro Acryl transparent paints. I'll talk, I ran them through the same test. I'll talk about how they worked. And then I've got a, just like I said, a couple Citadel, tran not transparent, uh, contrast paints, and I'll talk about them. So uh, let's head over to the painting desk and get after it. Okay, so when I started this experiment, I got uh, an STL of some interesting bases. Um, I'll have that linked in the show notes. I wanted to get the same base, so I looked for a base that had several different textures that I cared about for evaluating speed paints, contrasts, whatevs. Um, so there's some pits, there's uh, some curved things in here in these smaller areas. There's a flat surface here and it's not all that big, but it was kind of enough for me to get an idea. So I printed off like, I don't know, probably 90 of these things and um, spray mounted up a bunch on a board and I spray painted them all black with Rust-Oleum black primer and then I used some white, I had all of these like on a long stick taped in, they were all oriented the same. And so I sprayed from above and back kind of this direction diagonally across with a bit of white to kind of get a cheap ass Xenophil highlight. Um, the point was that I wanted some blacks in there and I wanted a bit of white so that I could, again, try to get a little better uh, get a get a decent experiment going. I then used a brush. Uh, I don't know. I think it was a pretty big brush, like one of these cheap synthetic AI EX uh, a number five or six. Doused the brush pretty well in um, a pot with speed paint. Um, you've probably seen this in other videos. I use one of these jobbers uh, for speed paints. I really like how it behaves. And so I dunked the brush in and um, I worked pretty much one at a time. And I'd try to stroke the same way across each of the bases. I wanted to make sure that I got a heavy amount in here, in the curved areas across this surface here, which has got some interesting texture. And then I'd take a stroke or two and try to smooth out this flat surface here. It's not a big surface, but I really wanted to see how each of the paints behaved um, if it was somewhat of a flat surface. And again, this is a small area, right? But um, it's the experiment that I ran. So when I finished all of that, as I was doing the work, I actually had some a, a notepad where I was taking notes on some very explicit things. Um, I've since transferred it to Excel because that way I could keep it around and I could read it rather than just scanning it. Um, and for each one of these paints, I'd grab the name, I 
rated everything excellent, good, fair, poor. And I was interested in how the paint flowed off the brush. Uh, after things had dried, how contrasty it was, how the coverage was on that flat area, and then frankly, just a very subjective thing, likability. Did I like the particular paint? And so this was really awesome because I now have a reference sheet. This probably isn't all fit in the frame, but I, I keep these in my hobby area. When I'm looking at doing some speed painting, I've got a good, co it's color swatches. It's like going into Sherwin Williams and you got the big wall of colors. I've got that same thing here for all of the speed paints, for the Pro Acryl transparents, um, and then the few Citadel uh, contrast things that I had. That's very crinkly. Sorry, probably terrible noise. Some things that were very helpful as I went through this process. Like I said in the intro, when I first used these, I was haphazardly grabbing things because I didn't really understand what the paints were, so I didn't know the colors well. There were also some that behaved very, very differently. Like this Battleship Gray here is a very thin color. Um, it's almost, frankly, more like a wash, and I think I've got that in my notes here. But you compare that to Murder Scene, and Murder Scene is thick coming off of the brush. It does not flow easily. It flows a bit goopy off. And then the flat surface, you can tell, even on the flat, with an additional brush stroke, it pulls up a bit. So it's a bit gloopy. But holy crap, is it this glorious color. Um... So having gone through this, it was really interesting. Also, I found that a couple of them, I had to be very careful about ensuring that everything was well shaken. So uh, Familiar Pink was the fifth one that I did and it didn't come out well. I went back and I shook a, the crap ton out of it on my little Turbo Vortex doodad um, and got much better coverage. So after that, point, this was five in, um, I started making sure that I was shaking the snot out of all of these before I dumped them into the pot and went on to painting. So that was a really good lesson learned about speed paints in general. Make sure you shake them well. Um, another lesson learned, and Frankly, it's it's sort of obvious, given that these are speed paints, um, they wick up your brush really quick, so quickly. So even if you try to get the paint down at the end, in pretty short order, it's going to wick up past the past the belly of the brush and get into the ferrule. Now, obviously, not obviously, not for everybody, not even for me. Um, with speed paints, you do not want to be using your fancy Kalinsky sables. Save these. Keep them away from speed paints, contrasts, all of that stuff. The medium is really weird, and it just immediately wicked up. So, lesson learned. They wick up really quickly. That means I'm... When I'm working with speed paints, I'm washing my brushes more frequently than I might, uh, both rinsing them and then getting after, getting after them with actual brush cleaner. Um, I've also got some Joe Sona liquid cleaner, and every once in a while I'll just dunk these and soak them in that, stick them in my paint rack, and just let them drip for a while, uh, and then come back and rinse them later. Uh, this is in a jar because I broke the lid of the plastic container. Anyway, so lesson learned, they wick badly, rinse them, wash them more often than you normally might. Um, other folks who have been painting a wall probably know that. I didn't. Now I know. Uh, shake the snot out of them also. Okay, so... What other lessons learned here? Um, 
Let, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll talk about the Pro Acryl here. So I love Pro Acryl. Um, on my paint rack here, it's the ones that are right in front of me. I use them most often because I love the color. I love the textures. Um, I'm starting to play around more with heavy body, but the Pro Acryl I still come back to regularly. And I've got AK, I've got Vallejo. Um, I just, I really like Pro Acryl. The transparent paints behaved differently than I expected. They are not as contrasty. They've got beautiful colors, like that orange is the bomb. That's just, that's a beautiful color. And then the red, um, I actually use the red on these Ukrainian warrior figures that I paint a lot of because just it's really vibrant. This is me not understanding the paint, but it's understanding and learning the effects of it. Um, it's really, really vibrant, and it covers well over white, which is what I've done with this. Um, and I paint up bunches of these because uh, I work with a bunch of Ukrainians and a volunteer organization. Anyway, um, so this blew up a bad assumption of mine that those should behave like contrast paints, and they don't. They're great in their own right. Um, I've used the green several times. Um, but again, having all of this stuff and understanding how things behave lets me do far, far better when it comes to choosing the right paint for the right job. I did have a few... Citadel Technical, and I'll restate that because I keep talking while I'm crinkling paper. Uh, I have a few Citadels here. Um, so Skeleton Horde and Warp Lightning are the only official contrast paints. I've got Tesseract Glow, which is technical, and then Blood for the Blood God. And I did not even remotely expect Blood for the Blood God to act anything like the other speed paints, the transparents, or contrast, because this stuff is just goopy gore that's meant to dangle off at the end of swords, and yeah, I, I love this. Anyway, again, this was really cool getting these out and getting a better understanding of how they work. Um, Tesseract Glow, which is often awesome fluorescent stuff for glowy eyes, plasma, etc., not great for a plasma or plasma, not great for a contrasty role. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of how I rolled through all of this stuff. Um, some of my favorites out of this set. I love Purple Swarm. This is just a beautiful purple color. Murder Scene, again, so this is thick. And I'm glad that I have this because this reminds me that it's going to behave differently. But man, that vibrant dark red is beautiful. Slaughter Red I use regularly, and I'll show some of that later where I use it all the time. Nuclear Sunrise is this beautiful light orange sunrise type color, and I really, really like it. Orc skin, I love the vibrancy there. Shamrock green I've used. Noble skin, I tend to use in conjunction with Satchel Brown and Fire Drake when I'm trying to do like hide or horn type things. Royal, Royal, yeah. Raging Sea, I love the color here. I haven't used it much, but I'm going to look for places I can because I just, it's a beautiful color. Royal Robes has great coverage and it's a lovely dark blue. I, I'm using this on all of my Ravage Star squad armor and I'll show you some of that in a bit. Um, I'm really happy with it. I use it all the time in conjunction with uh, Bright Red which is another great red. This covers really, really well. It's consistent, it flows well, uh, and these two are make up probably 70% of 
uh, articles on my squads for Ravage Star. Okay, so there's a couple, there's three different metallic speed paints, and frankly, they're fairly disappointing to me. Um, that said, I've got a crap ton of Pro Acryl and Vallejo metallic, so I go elsewhere when I need something for metallic, but these just don't really do much for me. What I do use them for is a base, as a speed paint, a base coat, uh, swap, slap something on there and then come back with actual true metallics and do some highlighting and that works really well. And I'll show an example of that a bit later. Um, the broadsword gold I use for weapons, um, silvery things, but again, I will highlight or dry brush or something else with true metallic silver on top of that and that works okay. Ruddy Fur and Satchel Brown, I talked about lovely colors for um, when I'm doing talons or bone or, or uh, hide. Um, oh, Satchel Brown also does really well for like leather cloaks. I've used this and Ancient Honey together. And oh my God, does that make some lovely tones. Desolate Brown and Brownish Decay are really good for like when you want grimy, gross skin. They've got a lovely green, nasty, brown, ugly tone to them. And I say that with love and appreciation because they really look good. Uh, the Four Citadels, right? Um, yeah, you know, enough said on all that. Tesseract glows great for what it is intended for, you know, fluorescent glowy things. Blood for the Blood God, it's just the bomb. And I think I already gave a pretty good summary of Pro Acryl. The red is glorious. The green, I really like. Uh, I think I've used the brown for cloaks. Black and white, frankly, I have not found a good use for them. I've played around with several different things. And there's just nothing at all that's clicked with me on them. Um, but the color colors, yeah, they work well. All right, enough said. One other use that I'd done was spraying speed paints. Vince V has a great tutorial on skin tones and I used his steps on this bust figurine, not in its current state. I've repainted it a couple times, but he used a brownish uh, contrast paint with a slight green tinge to filter and kind of help blend between the volumes. So I used, um, it was either uh, brownish decay or desolate brown. And that worked really well. They sprayed well. It got just that light coverage. I did thin it down a little bit, but it was an interesting use. I also used, I think it was Slaughter Red, um, to highlight parts of a dragon I did months ago. Um, and again, it sprayed well, both through um, my H&S uh, and my Talon brushes. Um, so yet another, you know, it's just another little piece of tool there. Now I'm gonna talk a bit about the pieces that I've learned uh, from working with. So this Arsalian Devourer from Ravid Star. <coughs> um, this is one of those places where I talked about using the speed paint bronze and uh, it's just not all that great. But when I combine that along with the Pro Acryl Copper, I get really good highlights. So that combining the speed paint plus something else to make it pop works really, really well. Quite frankly, I've forgotten the name of these uh, three brutes. I think they're... The other one was Devour. Are these just elites? These might be elites. Whatever. It's a pack of three. But here you can see that the speed paint, I'm using that Royal Robes Blue, it really comes into its own. It gets good coverage. Um, some of these I've come back with a blue 
to pick out some smaller details and do some edge highlighting. Uh, all of this brown, this kind of arm, uh, not armor, carapace, talon, bony stuff, that's all speed paint. And what this let me start to figure out is getting past all of this really fussy, overly detailed armor um, that was just impossible for me in my current state of skill to really get the kind of painting I wanted to do. So speed paint that, do some edge highlighting. Um, I used that broadsword silver to speed paint the gray metallic parts and then highlighted with the uh, Vallejo silver on top of that. And then here again, this is that broadsword, not the broadsword, the bronze with a bit of um, highlighting there. Okay, and then here we've got my squad um, that I just finished off yesterday. Uh, by the way, this, I've got a couple other videos on these folks, but this, I feel like I'm finally getting speed painting figured out, probably like an 80-20% of speed paint to regular stuff. So the blue, um, all of the red for their cloaks, this orange here, that's the nuclear sunrise. Um, and then I can pick out things with uh, acrylics and other normal paint. So the point of running through this whole exercise was for me to really get an understanding of how the paints behaved, how they were similar, how they were different. Um, having that color swatch is just it's really awesome plus it's um when something's running through my head and i'm trying to think of a color i've got that vibrant set of papers right there with the actual paint on plastic so it's uh it, you know it's a reference it's an inspirational it's just really helpful in that form uh the lessons i learned the big takeaways were um understanding the behavior of each one of the individual speed paints, um, learning that I've got to be very careful about constant rinsing and washing of the brushes because they wick so fast, um, and then learning how to actually work with them on actual models. So I really like that set. I got, you know, the big 50 mega set, um, for me, I think it was a really good investment after I learned how to use it. Uh, there are very few paints in there that I don't like. And I think over time, I'm going to find uses for almost all of them one way or another. If you found this useful, I'd love for you to tell me so in the comments. Let me know what you thought of the video. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And if you do subscribe, let me know in the comments. I'll say hi to you. Subscribing, make sure that you get notified and see when I'm dropping future content. I'm dropping several times a week at the moment because um, I'm trying to build up a good library. If you like the video, kindly give me a thumbs up. Uh, give it a like. That's very helpful for somebody who's just starting to build up a YouTube presence. Until next time, be kind, go out, experiment, and learn something. Remember, at the end of the day, it's just paint and plastic.